Welcome guys, it's Alexander Williamson here, and we'll be having some fun talking about black water, black water tanks, and uh, some other updates, boo, oh Betsy's scaring me, so we'll wait for people to filter in, and we'll chill to some uh, Doobie Brothers, Frog Tim Aquatics, welcome! I thought this song might be a little fitting for the intro. Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me, old black water? Keep on rolling, Mississippi moon, won't you keep on shining on me? That's shining. Hey. Ellie's West Sheldon, Water Wizard, everyone's still tuning in. You're going to sleep. Oh, Proxim Aquatics is in India. Alright, well let's get down to business. Okay, so let's, uh, how's everybody doing by the way? As always, I'll start out my uh, intro with... Uh, happy Saturday as well, unless you're in like uh, Kiribati or something where it's already Sunday. Um, I just hopped over. I was on um, Waterbox channel watching his stream. So just like most live streams, if you have a question and you are a live, ask it. Other than that, I'll kind of be going over some black water stuff and the questions don't need to be related to black water. As uh, Sunday morning here in New Zealand. Ah, Kiwi, welcome. The fish room. Good to have a Kiwi on board. I love New Zealand. I would live there if I could afford to move right now. Uh, but yes. So, uh, Christ, er, uh, Christ Church. Yeah, that city. Fun. Uh, so, let's get down to business, shall we? If you've been watching me recently, you know that I have uh, recently acquired some Tatia catfish. So the Tatia catfish, they look like baby orcas, you've probably seen the video. Um, <clears throat> and there's a little problem, it's not a problem, but there's a little hitch in owning them. So they were supposed to be ninja uh, wood cats. And there's well-known species like honeycomb, and even the ninja now has been named as Tatia mosaica. Um, and the Tatia species or uh, family has 125 or so variables. Well, turns out the one that I got is not named yet, and that species is it lives in a little more extreme conditions than I thought it did. Luckily, I had a viewer from Germany who has raised them. Not only has he raised them, he actually has bred them. Oddball Aquatics, um, Ted Judy, and uh, a couple other folks, they've, they've raised similar ones, the ninja ones. But apparently these guys, one, they have spikes. So they have spikes on their fin and on their dorsal fin and on their pectoral fins. And then they also... Um, don't have any white above like their belly. So their belly is white, but there's no white dots by their fins or anything. So n with this info and the subtle, they're so subtle, it, you have to be a fish nerd to figure it out. And luckily some fish nerds were watching that are all about catfish. Um, and so they helped me figure that out. So I don't know where the supplier's getting them. HC Aqua, welcome. I just wanted to also note that uh, these fish that I have are found in Venezuela. We don't really trade with Venezuela or Brazil right now for catfish or a lot of fish. And um, water wizard, hello. And so basically they came out on a smuggling route. So it's kind of just, I don't know, I find that really fascinating that like a fish that retails wholesale for 20 bucks you know the wholesalers taking a huge risk and a lot of them die so maybe they pay 10 bucks at very most and that's from a broker which means that the people who are willing to smuggle it across the border like amerindians or locals in the area that live in the amazon 
we're willing to get the gas for the boat or whatever, go across the border, then or there's people who live over there, and then meet up on the border with a bag full of fish. Some are dying there. Some die in transit to the other place. And then they get them on a plane and ship them to the U.S. So these people have to be getting... I don't know, a buck a fish, maybe at best, even for like these rare, interesting fish. So just something to think about, like the journey that your fish came on. Just wanted to throw that out there. So let's get down to business. None of y'all gonna handle this -ness. Uh So I put a curtain up to try to block out the, the reflection since this is midday again. It's not a bottle of urine. This is uh, vinegar eels here, a culture of them next to a stack of art that I need to clean up. Also, um, in this tank right now, we've got Brightwell substrate. And this was originally for blue bolt shrimp. Well, it got infested with hydra and, um, and planaria. And so I took the blue bolts out of there because I knew they weren't gonna breed or anything. And I, JH, welcome, man. You had to get your hair cut? Awesome. Well, JH, you might be able to help me on this cast more. You're a better expert at Blackwater than I am. So this is kind of like my second foray into Blackwater. And the first one was a while back. Um, but let's go over. So there's like, essentially, there's three types of Blackwater in my mind. And there's the chemical one. There's the substrate one, and then there's the additive, like ways to control it. And I have decided, um, you're sending me leaves, lots of leaves. Oh, that would be so rad. Um, but yeah, so basically in this tank, it's all bright well. So that's clay and peat that has been uh, compressed into little pellets. And it has some minerals and stuff, but it's kind of just a like a carbon and... Uh, basic inert source of a pH and if you put this in your tank and you have neutral uh, low TDS water when you put it in there things will kind of settle out at around Damien welcome welcome everybody come on in um, yeah I like this tank unfortunately I moved it and now I'm got to disassemble it I told my wife I wouldn't keep hoarding tanks that's right oh my wife wanted to chime in all of a sudden. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just telling our friends online about how you love me and um, want me to have fish tanks. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that for now. Yeah, until the, in the, until the live cast over. Are you leaving, honey? In about 10 minutes, five minutes. Okay, well, give me a kiss before you go. She's going to a soccer game, so. Love you. Love you, honey. All right, back to fish, guys. My true love. She heard that. Okay, so this tank, Brightwell Substrate. This is great for shrimp and stuff. And this is essentially bringing down the acidity. Black water, let's define that. So black water tends to have three things. That's a low TDS, or medium TDS, I should say. A low pH, and that means acidic and also tannins or biological enzymes. 5.5 uh, pH, yes, JH uh, Aquatics. Um, he is down in the Virgin Islands. He does the f hashtag fish fam news. You guys should check him out, obviously. Um, he does a great job of just kind of keeping up with stuff. Plus he's been going on all these expeditions and stuff like that. So, um, Hold on. My Amanos are breeding and my upside down cat is ravenous. What do I do without? So do you have a brackish tank? Is that what I'm understanding? Um, Ellis West's shell dome? Because they will uh, breed, but they will not. If you don't have salt water, they will not be viable offspring. So don't worry about that, I guess. I mean, I'm sorry that you're not going to get a mono shrimp but you're not. They need salt water and they have a six stage larval life span. So they come out as these little microscopic uh, squiggly worms that are teeny tiny and then they turn into like little tadpoles and then another stage, another stage. Uh, you can look it up. They're, they're considered a lower uh, level breeder of 
of, of the shrimp and world. Uh, upside down catfish, yeah, Cynodonus upturus, <laughs> yeah, Cynodonus are awesome. Um, Cynodonus, though, do have an appetite, as all catfish do. So let me, let's get down to business. Let's let's show you guys the catfish first. I've had the lights off so that they won't go uh, buck wild on you guys. So let's turn the light on. We're going to turn the light on. Do, 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 do. And hope that they, uh, if they do something, you might see it while I'm redoing this light switch thing. Um, so right now, let's see, have they all hit the deck? They probably have. Uh, they, they saw the light coming in. And so, there's one back in here. And I'm going to, I don't want to harass these guys every day, but since they're new, I want folks to know what they are. And I want people to see, because maybe they can help me, because there's not much info on these. Um the let's see here so let me move this stuff so as of two or three days ago started adding leaves you can also see this is my shrimp coal tank so the shrimps that aren't up to par are in here but it's probably going to spaz out but when i take when i uncover this catfish so here you go this is what they look like They've got a beautiful white belly. This is the skinny one, whereas the other ones are super, super um, hardy, and they're just huge. So I don't know if this one's sickly. We're deworming them, so hopefully that will help, or if it's just young, and there's no literature on it. But he breathes heavily whenever I come and film him or bug him, but he's doing it less. Gareth Doyle, welcome. Uh, you can see those giant eyes. They have blue around them. And then its belly, if you can see its belly kind of adjusted, is a stark white. But unlike the other catfish species, and it looks like he hurt himself too, by the way. It looks like he cut himself or his slime coat or something right up here. That was not like that earlier. And I'll have to keep an eye on that. But they vigorously bury themselves so he's full grown length almost and he's a little smaller than my pinky they're supposed to be uh two inches uh yojo cromwood welcome everybody pile on in uh so i don't know how he's doing but the killifish are friggin loving that i'm turning this into a black water tank Look at that male displaying. He's already, uh, they've already laid eggs, which is rad. Before, they had a hard time. In this tank, I had um, some catapa leaves and stuff. And um, the killies are, were kind of indifferent. They laid some eggs, and they didn't seem to get fertilized or whatever. But yeah, so this little guy, you can see them, but not in all their glory. So let's go look around here. The other ones are usually actually... They think they're clever, but they're not so clever. They, they don't hide very well. Um, but you can see I still have shrimp in here. Now these shrimp are not going to like this black water tank transformation, so I've been fishing them out as I can, but if any of you have kept shrimp in a planted tank with lots of hiding spots, you know that that is a tall order. So in here, um, there's still a few endlers too, like Fry that managed to evade me. Um, in my pursuit uh, but I don't want to force digging at everything um, we'll take one more look to at the around the back and see if there's any back in here under this rock and I don't see any so these are these guys you'll see in my other videos past videos too they're insane they move like no one else um, that I've ever seen in the fish world. Uh, they can go like from here resting and they'll shoot to the surface, nail something that they want to eat or check out, and then they'll slam down into the gravel and they'll literally disappear like sandworms out of dune or something if you guys are sci-fi nerds. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing this the most basic way. I have choya wood, we have uh, a rock that actually has a low pH, 
but it has minerals. So I know from this rock being in other tanks, it will raise the TDS. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you have a black water tank or a tannin rich tank, whatever you want to call it, if it's not quite 5.5 .5 to, to meet that definition. Oh, there's the other catfish under the leaf litter. That's exactly where I want them to be and to stop burying themselves under the gravel because I just am worried they're gonna get hurt there. Um, so let's take a look. Um, so here is a healthy one, or at least a more mature one. There's not enough to know that like what's healthy versus what's not as far as size and skinniness. Um, and all the other ninja cats that people on YouTube have, that's not what this is. So it's probably similar to a ninja or a honeycomb. Oh, you can see that there is also still a fry. So there's a healthy one right there. Plump, looks like an orca. Um, and he's going to be hitting the deck now that I disturbed him just by kind of prodding near him. But they're a nocturnal uh, critter. And... They're awesome to watch at night. Uh, I came in here around 4 in the morning, and they just basically, they hit like a bass does. Uh, all right, J.H., you take care, man. Uh, I hope you're doing well. And, uh, yeah, so they hit like a bass does, as I was saying. Okay, you've got a question raising TDA. TDS, I assume. Uh, mine seems to always be low, but all my fish and shrimp do well. Should I worry about it? My tap TDS is about 50. Okay, hold on. Let me set that down. Okay, so let's discuss this a, a bit. Um, Facebook me your ad. Okay, cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, should I worry about it? Your TDS is 50. 50 and your water is mineral rich well okay so of that 50 are you trying to say that that in that fit in that amount that 50 tds that a lot of that is minerals rather than something useless like well not useless but something like carbon or inert material is that what you're trying to say because basically with tds in my water, it comes out as 28. Now, chlorine is part of that, as well as trace elements of copper and iron. And that seems to be all that are in, all that's in Seattle water where I live. So if you have, um, if you have crystal shrimp, as long as your pH is low, then they're probably really stoked to have like 50 TDS and um, low pH. That's perfect for them. But, and then you can add a little bit of calcium if they need it by either adding shells or whatever. But with me, like, so my water comes out about 7.0. So in this tank, I've put a tub of that Brightwell substrate, which is clay and peat moss, uh, essentially, into little pellets. Now, those little pellets will bring the pH down, and they'll release a little bit of mineral. But things like EcoComplete, even rocks and wood, release more minerals. And then only wood and vegetative matter, leaves that have already lost their chlorophyll, essentially, will have the decaying um, enzymes that, are, that make up tannins. Um, tannins are also found in wine and other things, but we're talking the brown, like heavy, hardcore tannins that come out like tea. Tea has it also. I don't recommend putting tea in your tank because tea has been selected by folks for a long time for, um, lots of other reasons, like that it tastes strong or whatever. Um, I just wanted to point out that it looks like maybe one of my crystals, let's take a look might finally be buried i don't know that or she got hurt but i think she's buried so that's exciting i keep the temperature down on the this tank whoa they're going spastic they are quick today um come on here we go yeah come to the front let us check you out yep she's buried Woohoo! so the gold bee has eggs so that's the first Caradina in this batch from Flip that's pregnant. It took a month, but uh, we've got a gold bee that is pregnant. 
and is carrying. So yay. But let's get back to if you have neocaridina shrimp, which is what I'm guessing you have. Um, let, let me read this. There's another comment now. Priscilla Art, um, I got yellow golden backs in that 20, but they seem fine. Molting and everything. Just wondered if I should buffer it. Or if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If they look fine, then don't worry about it, honestly. Their shells, if, if they start f dying, I mean, that's a clear sign. But if their shells, if when they molt, um, they get stuck, that's a sign that maybe they don't have enough calcium to build a proper exoskeleton. Uh, also, the other sign would be, like on this guy, and he's the one that the other day I said I was going to watch, because all the other ones look fine. And usually if all the other ones look fine, they're probably fine. But this cherry shrimp has a white line going on. So he either needs to be shedding and stretching in the little um, bent position where they look like an, the letter, an, a lowercase letter N. Or um, f like flexing and trying to crack out of that shell. Now if he can't do that, a lot of times, th or she... A lot of times there'll be a line and you'll see where they failed to molt. They will continue to grow in that body without enough room and they will die. And that's a bummer. But the line on top is not a sign, especially so here's a gold line um, from LR Bretts. Now you may be wondering why the heck does he have gold line shrimp and a jade shrimp and a cherry shrimp and caradina shrimp together. Well, my little secret here is I accommodate for the Caradina at their high end. So like 6.8 with a TDS of like 100. And then um, I don't worry so much about the KH and GH other than what I'm observing. So I've found that through food, I can get them a lot of calcium and things like that. Or at least that's where I'm assuming they're getting it. Now, I have put a teeny bit of crushed coral in here, which raised the TDS. But knowing that it's crushed coral, it's the right kind of TDS. Because you could have a TDS of 600 and still keep your caridina if, in theory, it was TDS that doesn't matter. Now, usually it's a calcium carbonate combination. And that is something that does matter and can kill caridina shrimp. It can be too strong. Their eggs won't hatch. Um, they won't open. Um, but yeah, crystal shrimp are kind of the next step. What I do is I take my pregnant ones, and these are my two shrimp tanks. So in here, I've got the truest line of blue shrimp they won from Lucas Bretz in the world. Uh, Madfish Diva, welcome. Um, yeah, I don't... Hold on. Oh, I see where the glare was coming from. <laughs> Weird. Uh, it was a bucket thing that I have to put fish in. Um, but yeah, so in this tank here, uh, it's very, it's, it's doing well. It's such a fertile tank. If you look closely, there are quite a few snails. There was just like a explosion, which means I'm overfeeding them a little bit. But I'm not worried about that because I can handle the snails as long as I'm not seeing planaria, um, which are little worms, or hydra. That is not the end of the world that I overfed the tank. You just need to clean it out after they're done eating. Also, you can see I've got these jade, a jade shrimp female in here. She is buried, and that's the reason why she's in here. She has babies coming. So does the yellow she has babies coming and see that's that stretch so usually they should stretch before they have their babies and then they um and then they uh once they stretch then they'll become buried it's usually a sign um but this yellow is very egg laden and so what i do is for the last two weeks of their pregnancy of having eggs i'll throw them in here the babies will grow up. You guys have heard this spiel probably before if you watch my channel. But the babies, like here's some cherry reds. Here's a perfect example. That is a King Kong, a black King Kong. And um, essentially it's stretching. And you can see you see its, uh, its growth plates, that, that kind of clear spot or white spot on its back. It's trying to crack those open and it'll pull its head out through... It'll pull its head out through this spot right here. 
and then it'll climb out of its shell. So this one's probably almost ready to go like in a day or two. And you see how it's kind of cleaning and pulling at itself. So that is a good sign that you have enough calcium if they can successfully molt. Now, the other thing is leave the molts in. So here you can see there's a molt. Um, the other thing, if you're breeding shrimp, leave your dead snail shells in. That's some calcium. Watch the TDS. If it gets too high, then you can worry about it. Um, but if, you're fit, if your shrimp, especially Neocaridina, if they're not having a problem, then don't worry about it because Neocaridina have become so adaptable that, I mean, the red cherries specifically are almost bulletproof as far as shrimp go. Um, I've had them left out overnight in a bucket of substrate when it's like 40 degrees and somehow a couple survived like they were in the you know the gravel that got scooped out when I thought the tank was empty and I go and see in the morning there's like a little you know puddle spot how do you breed mountain minnows oh it's interesting you ask so um I know I was going to talk about black water but we're going to go on a side tour a, a side thing uh yeah I built hey I built a three thousand liter pond this weekend and i am trying to hold on i'm reading these questions stop these questions need to be live there we go um hey i built three thousand liter pond this weekend going to try to keep some shrimp in it too yeah i mean i'd recommend that give it a shot try cherry shrimp first if you have a heater i mean that might not hurt um if it's an outdoor pond, but really I've seen the shrimp overnight um, be okay. Uh, and then, um, so right here, he asked about breeding minnows and small fish. So I just recently, I swapped out this little tank, don't look at the junk, and the CO2 and the fans and the extra lights. Um, Got to bounce, Priscilla MKR. All right, you have a great Memorial Day. Take care. So I just built this over the last week, and I've got CPDs, but this might as well be Tetras, any tiny fish. And I've sectioned off a 20 breeder into a 10-gallon section, a 4, and a 6. It's not the best craftsmanship, but it does. It will do. It does, it will do. Um, so essentially... Under here, I've taken uh, knitting mesh, plastic needle point mesh, and under here, everything falls down. And I'm just, this just a PVC pipe cap ends that were 50 cents a piece at the hardware store. And basically, they will lay eggs, um, it's interesting. Right there, we might have some eggs already. Um, what? That is so weird. I can't wipe this off the glass. It's like drops of water, but on the inside. I don't know. I'll have to check out what the heck is going on. Sorry. Uh, but in any case, so there's a grate separating. So any eggs that are laid up in the water, when they try to lay it on this wispy stuff, it'll fall down. Now the other method is going on, sorry about the glare up here, there's just going to be glare, is to have things like this where they're going to be drawn to lay eggs and then you keep a group of them in here and you let them spawn onto this and then you pull the adults out every three or four days and hope they don't eat too many of the eggs they laid so that's another way then the other way i kind of did all three to play with it so there's a grate here for eggs and a very teeny gap so it's just to kind of catch the eggs and then the fry will be so teeny they'll swim through that grate so I still will have to get the adults out of there. But up here is a pen for the adults. And here I have some fry that are just raised up that are similar to this fry, but a different strain and generation from a different set of parents. So I separated them. But this is all running off of, this is a real cheap way to do it. It's all running off one hang off the back. It doesn't hurt to put some sponge filters. I've just got a bag of cycled substrate in there. And then, um, yes, goldfish kill plants. Goldfish will, um, no, uh, let me show you. So these are babies. Let me run upstairs and show you the, um, 
the minnows that are pregnant and they lay a ton of eggs. If you put them in a pond, just make sure you have enough um, or a Rubbermaid tub or whatever, like a 50 gallon tub, you, they will reproduce. Uh, here's a pregnant one. So if I were to put these two down there again tonight, she will probably lay eggs as uh, the male, where's the male? There's a male up here. He has tighter finnage and she's got that elongated belly. Here's another female. So if I put them downstairs, they will breed. But I'm trying to breed these right now because they're worth more money, um, to be frank. And they're so teeny, I love them. Um, goldfish are notoriously hard on plants. Um, you can have Anubias sometimes, Java moss some or Java ferns sometimes, sword plants sometimes. Um, a, another good thing is you just get some duckweed and throw that on top. They'll eat that like there's no tomorrow. Like they're great duckweed controllers. Um, so you can just feed them duckweed indefinitely. I didn't buy duckweed. I don't want duckweed. And uh, yeah. So these are, um, yeah, these are Vietnamese um, rather than the Chinese minnows, the, the meteor minnow ones uh, that are from Vietnam. But there's also the white cloud minnows. And then there's also now the blonde um, Thai Vietnamese. I don't, who knows for sure where they came from. Uh, but there's also those. This is odd. The Siamese algae eater is just a weirdo. It sits on rocks and stuff. I'm not going to touch it, but I'm curious if it's okay. Maybe I will touch it. That's not a good sign. It seems like it's having some real trouble here. Hold on. Emergency fish medicine. You know what I think's going on is that possibly... The CO2 being on, that being a new fish, it is not used to the CO2. And uh, the CO2 drops the pH considerably. And uh, let's, let's get this guy out of here. Come on. Oh, now it's quicker than all heck. All right, well, if it can do that to hide, we'll wait. But... Usually, you need to take action on a fish if it's not moving. Uh, also, speaking of black... Oh, and it's eating already. I don't know. Maybe it's just being a weirdo. Um, fish do odd stuff sometimes when you think you've seen it all. So, the other thing is, in this tank, I've got Brightwell... Or not Brightwell, but Amazonia ADA. And the pH in this tank hovers right around 6.4. And my TDS, as I said, out of the tap is 28... And so the TDS just happens to rise to around 150 with plants and food. Food has a lot of stuff in it. So even if your tap water is, or you're using roadie water, like distilled water, it's, it, it can throw things off. Now, uh, the food can, that is. Now over in here, this tank is, um, how big does a... How big does my goldfish upgrade tank need to be? Well, that really depends on the size of your goldfish. Um, but as big as it needs to, I know that's a smart-ass answer. I'm sorry. Uh, but I would say that um, you probably want the bigger the better with goldfish because they make a lot of ammonia. They make a lot of mess. Two inches isn't that big yet. Uh, I would say a 20 gallon would be fine for now, um, like just fine. A 10 um, is fine too. I mean, they will exist in a little bowl, to be honest with you, if you change the water and have air going into it. They'll exist even if you don't have air going into it sometimes. But it's a quality of life thing, so it's kind of up to you how much room you want to give it. Um, like in this tank, I've got this thing loaded to the brim, but I know which fish hang out where. And so we've got the schooling fish in the midwaters and the guppies that go up top mostly. And then we've got the algae eaters and, you know, other fish that, uh, traverse all the places. Um, yes, my cleaner had goldfish for 20 years in a 20 gallon. Yeah. I mean, 
if you have a goldfish that's like eight or nine inches long, like a comet that's just 20 years old or something, put it in a 40 breeder or whatever. Um, and that's probably going to be less work for you in the long run. Um, these guys all think they're getting fed, but I just fed them this morning and I fed them bloodworms and like Vegemite basically, um, like nutritional yeast. Uh, you see this algae? Not cool. And you see the two algae eaters doing nothing about it? Not cool. Do your job, bros. Okay, so um, the other interesting thing, I flipped the lights on right before this cast, and this lily is still closed up, um, which is kind of funky. Closes up at night sometimes. And then up top, it sent all these crazy runners up to the top. You can't, The glass is dirty, but yeah. I don't really cover most of my tanks, but that tank is all gravel, so the pH stays the same as what it is out of my tap. This tank here has sand and a little bit of, is there even much wood in it? No, there's not much wood in it. So this tank, oh, it needs cleaning badly. I need to scrape it with a razor blade. But this is my other minnow strain tank, mountain minnow. And it did have more Danios and stuff, but I've since moved them. I'm trying to breed them. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I keep four fancy goldfish in a very heavily planted... Hold on. Let me read that. A very heavily planted 45. They are mega healthy. Yeah, totally. If, if uh... <laughs> your algae eater... Uh, 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 is that... Tui... Tai, Tu, uh, Nguyen, uh, I want to say your name right, but welcome, I don't know if I've seen you in the chat before, so welcome, 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 maybe once before, my algae eater does nothing except for steal foods from my angel fishes, that's what he said, that's awesome, or she, he or she, I don't know, I don't want to assume these days, yep, no one got it right, <laughs> uh, is, uh, how do you say it? T H U, Thu? T Tu? I, I don't know. They're phonetically with I'm assuming Vietnamese uh, names. People uh, people uh, translating it into English. Sometimes they follow the rule, and sometimes they follow the French. It seems like maybe uh, like French pronunciation rules, and so I've noticed that. But I speak a little bit of French, so sometimes, like, it, two or three guesses, I'll get it. Okay, back downstairs. Mmm. I almost forgot. Mini bottles of Dr. Pepper, resealable. Uh, this, this show is brought to you by them today. They're not paying me, but they should be. Um, no one's paying me. Except, except my loyal Patreons. Thank you, guys. You sweethearts. You kings of New England, if anybody gets that reference. Um, another thing I was going to say, oh, this tank has a lower pH, 6.5. Boom, coconut and wood. Just those in the tank lowered the pH. But to really get black water tank going, what you want, you can see stuff's even growing on the sides in a matter of two or three days of me doing this. Um, I just got the catfish, what, three or four days ago now? And... Uh, I've put eight, six, six huge uh, catapa le almond, almond leaves, which you can get online. They're cheap. They're 50 cents to a buck a piece. Put those in there, and uh, I've let them just marinate. But then I did a big water change like a dummy and threw out half the good water of the tannins. Uh, but that, whew, I thought I lost you guys. I had to run upstairs. Um, whenever I get to the weekend... Everyone in the neighborhood is using the, uh, um, boom, Daryl Moore, thank you. Uh, so, I guess I can't broadcast down there on the weekends because everybody's watching Netflix in Seattle and we don't have enough fiber for the internet. Um, actually, maybe this is good news, but if you look out here... You see that wrapping? That's actually fiber optic spiraling around the line. And so they just laid four more lines of T3 for the whole area, 
So hopefully that'll help. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a cheapskate, and so let's sit down for a minute. Not make Betsy dizzy. Um, so I'm kind of a cheapskate, and basically I pay for the medium internet. Like we have fiber here, but problem is when you live in a city with four million people in the metro area. It's all great to have fiber, but if everybody's on it, it's still slow. So um, they're finally kind of upgrading it. But before, you could pay three times as much, and it didn't guarantee your use of anything. Man, I need to shave. I'm getting turning into a gersley bear. Uh, but, yeah, so let's finish that little talk I was on, the little tangent, and then we'll do some more questions. Uh, but pardon the internet interruption. Uh, interruptions are my middle name. I can't stop, like, whatever, the ADD of my brain when I see something in a tank. I'm like, you guys gotta see that too. This is rad. Um, so thanks for bearing with me through this. Uh, but basically, the black water tank, you can buy additives. Um, I've seen, like, um, Kent, uh, the fish company, like, they have an additive. Um, there's one called Amazon Rain. Another one called Liquid Black. There's another one called, like, Black Extract. And I have never used additives. The problem with additives is you have to add them every time you do a water change. And you have to add them periodically every week anyways because they have compounds that break down. Now, for me, what I want is I want to get a hold of some Malaysian Driftwood some sphagnum moss or peat moss like bog moss uh, or duff whatever you want to call it it's compressed life um, and bury that under the substrate and that will be a sustainable source for months and months if not years of keeping that that ph low now one thing is you can yeah so i that's exactly mad fish diva i use almond leaves and driftwood as you saw downstairs the choya and the spider wood and then there's also um, magnolia wood in there too which is a local uh wood here uh or madrona sorry not magnolia um that washes up on our beaches, but it's got a nice red auburn kind of color in there if you saw it. Uh, and then that stone is actually, um, it has some calcium in it. So the calcium, your KH and your, your GH, but mostly your KH, that is called a buffer. And so that allows when the pH changes, so sometimes your pH out of your tap water might be higher. In the summer here, our pH is higher because there's dead leaves and things in the reservoir that have stuck up. Uh, Teresa Cookie, hello, welcome. Uh, in the winter here and spring into the early summer, it's all snowmelt, rain, and there's nothing in it. Nothing. And so we'll get a TDS, which isn't high at all, but like a 40 parts per million um, in the later summer. And so at that time, I always make sure that my tanks are buffered, which is basically putting something, whether it's wood or having some calcium in there in the form of shells. You can even use eggshells. Like I've said this before, but make an omelet, take the shells, throw them in boiling water, and then crush them a little bit, not like into powder, but crush them, throw them in the back of your hang on the back filter if you have one or in a filter bag. And then that will get um, bacteria colonizing on it in a biofilm. And it's not like that actually breaks down. There's little pieces of eggshell that your fish are eating. Although sometimes they might do that because of the membrane on the inside of the egg. They do kind of like that, certain fish. Uh, but really the bacteria is what is absorbing that calcium. And then the fish, the shrimp up through the food chain kind of thing, uh, take care of that. And so if you have shrimp, or if you have discus or something that's sensitive to pH swings and you need to keep it either low or high, that's when you want to keep your buffering uh, agent there in the water. And that is your KH. And that's why shrimp keepers care about KH, your carbonate hardness. Whereas your general hardness is everything. And everything also stops the swinging of the pH a little bit just because it's more stuff to absorb. It's like, um, 
let me try to think of a good example or a bad example. Let's think of a bad example. Okay, so it's like if you take um, food dye and you throw it into a bowl of water, that's going to diffuse pretty quickly. If you throw it into milk, it kind of like swirls and doesn't really go much. And that's because the particles are bigger. There's fat. There's other stuff in there. So uh, coral. So coral is a great question. Coral works the same way in the opposite way. It is it is a buffer. But coral, um, thanks fish room. I appreciate you appreciating me so we can all be appreciatees. Uh, so coral similar to eggshells or cuttlefish um, cuttle bone, which is uh, pure calcium on the inside of them. It's kind of like their only rigid structure other than their beak. Um, and birds chew on that. You can get it at pet stores. Um, but yeah, so you can use that. You can use snail shells from your existing snails when they die and things like that. You can just leave them in there. Another great way of telling if your KH and GH are too low, specifically your KH, um, if you're in a region where it's low or you have a water purifier or a roadie machine is you can take, um, your ram's horn snails and if they have clear spots and they aren't colored up and like they're translucent or white, you know, for sure they do not have enough calcium and they're, that's a bad health sign for them actually. So that's, I use that as my indicator. I have ram's horn snails pretty much in every tank. Yeah, at almost every tank. And I use them as my indicator species. It's good to have an indicator species for everything. Shrimp are another good one if they're turning... Um, YouTube crashed. What? Is it still... Am I here? Are we here? Uh, YouTube has had some crazy problems lately. They said they were going to monetize my channel in February. Nothing yet. Uh, they said that they were going to let me have mods. Like they were going to like, we're still going through things, but we're going to reopen the mod thing for certain accounts that were made at certain times. And, um, that didn't happen. And then now they're like deleting channels and they're like last night, it said that I was verified with a hundred thousand, um, uh, a hundred thousand. It said I was verified with a hundred thousand subscribers on uh, Bob Steenfot's feed, which was just funny. He's like, "Congratulations, Alex," with two thousand followers or whatever. Um, so they're doing some major testing right now, or like re something. And Bentley Pasco, who I did the fish room tour of, he works for Microsoft, so he has a big insight to all this. And basically. Um, he said they're doing testing and they uh, have decided to do it while it's still running and they try it on areas like fish, um, knitting tutorials, I don't know, whatever. Stuff that's like not rap and Kim Kardashian and top five, you'll never guess who married who. Like the stuff that gets a million plays, uh, they don't mess with that spectrum. They, they go under like the categories that are uh, less watched. And they do the tweaks live there and then see what happens. Like, oh, shoot, it crashed. Who cares? Some fish nerds went down or whatever. Um, that's what I was told. I don't know if that's true. YouTube, I love you. Don't don't crash me, please. Um, so, crushed coral, that was the question. Crushed coral will increase your TDS big time, especially if you don't wash it. Like, if you don't wash crushed coral, it will skyrocket your TDS. Like, a pound of it in a 10-gallon uh, tank, like a pound, so it's like this much of a bag, um, it's pretty dense stuff, will actually um, raise your TDS. It's raised mine from 50 to, like, 300, one pound of it in the substrate, with 20 pounds of other substrate. <laughs> That's if you don't wash it. If you wash it, maybe it'll... It, every coral's different, but it's intense stuff, and you can overdo it quickly. The other thing you can also do... Heather Nielsen, welcome. Check out her channel, Scarlet Aquatics. Um, the other thing you can do with the crushed coral that I recommend, especially if you didn't have it, no one's dying, and you just think it'll improve things, is add a little bit. If you're in a disastrous, 
That's a wrap. Fish Fam News Film. Nice, J.H. Joseph. Good good work, man. You have my, Your first name is my middle name. Uh, Kroger Marcus. Uh, hello, Alexander. Hello. Uh, is it Kroger? Krieg? Kro uh, Kroger, it looks like. I don't know. Um, Joseph, hey. Um, oh, you paused Liverpool versus Manchester for this. Wow, that's some dedication. I never thought that anybody would ever care about Crush Coral and TDS more than football. So thank you. You, I highly respect you guys. Um, I ha Oh, you have a Blackwater tank. Awesome, awesome. Um, Marcus has a Blackwater tank. So you're a little late, Marcus, but we were just talking about basically the three things. <clears throat> oh, Real Madrid. There's still big teams that people love. So uh, that and uh, Manchester and uh, Real Madrid. I'm trying to think like, I guess, Liverpool and I don't know. I feel like those are the ones in, C in Seattle that we have just diehard fans for. Mostly Manchester United. Um, we have a lot of British folks uh, here. And then Mad Real Madrid, we have Spanish folks here too. It's a big city. We got a lot of everyone. Um, but, yeah, everyone always thinks Seattle's not that big of a city and it's up in the corner. Uh, Seattle itself has 700,000 people, but the city lines are like, here's the line. Oh, the skyscraper is on this line or whatever. So there's no discernible difference. And there's 4 million people connected by at least five-story apartment buildings on every other block. Like, you can connect that much of cities and several skyscraper centers like Bellevue and other stuff. And then if you connect the whole corridor, it's six million people across 100 miles. That's all houses. So this area has gotten crazy built up. And it is affecting my water because we're, we have a lot of it, but we sell it to California. You're welcome, California. Um, because the Northwest has so much water with mountains all around. Can I see the mountains today? Uh, yeah, I can see them vaguely. Um, but basically, uh, the, the black water tanks, uh, Marcus, as I was saying earlier, you can do additives, which I don't like. If you're really in a pinch, they work. Um, but I like catapa leaves or Indian almond leaves, banana leaves, mulberry leaves, oak leaves. The other thing you can do, and this is really what I recommend if you have the time and resources and space, is boil down some leaves. Like, go get some in the fall. Just collect as much as you can of oak leaves and, uh, mulberry, oak, um, maple, uh, I've used maple leaves really well, uh, and even um, like alder leaves and alder cones. And basically, I take that and I turn it into a tea in a big pot, and then I squeeze it out, and it's this dark water. And then I'll mix that with the ratio once I test that. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 3.8 pH or whatever. And so I'll mix that to 5 or whatever it needs to be with my tap water and then I'll let that sit and I'll add more leaves that haven't been boiled because they have bacterial cultures that are useful. And so specifically Indian almond leaves and banana leaves and things like that, they have alfolks and really important call. Oh wait, Marcus just said something about this. Let's see. Uh, I start my tanks also blackwater biotope by inoculating them with aged tea and comfrey and nettles, uh, forcing bacterial microbial bloom off off abundant. Um, the fish introduced later, love it. And the alder cones and leaf litter. Don't force the pH. Wow, you have 8.0 from the tap? Okay, yeah, that's a challenge. So from here, my water comes out. Um, I have not checked out tannins.com actually, because to me, I don't want to spend money. I mean, I'll spend money on Indian almond leaves because they do have properties similar to aloe vera and stuff that the shrimp really do seem to like. So for my caradina shrimp and stuff, I'll use that. 
But really for fish and stuff, I've used a lot of different local leaves that are completely free. I get a trash bag of them in the fall and I use that. Um, <clears throat> I did something interesting a couple years ago. I used poppy straw, like edible, like eating poppies that are also, you know, um, from a garden. A lady had done yard waste, but it makes a really um, yellow tea kind of thing, kind of a green to a yellow. And I was curious if that would work, like the poppy straw. And uh, it knocked all my fish out. And so now I have a jar. Um, well, I don't anymore, actually. Let me correct that. I put uh, it in a jar and I use that instead of clove oil because the alkaloids from the poppies would knock out the fish like anesthetic. Um, to a human, it wouldn't have done much. It was the straw. It wasn't the sap. It, you know, it's it, you make opium a different way. But... Same plant, and it, it worked really well there. I will have to check out Tannin's website, that Tannin website, um, tannins.com. Is that, is that what you said, tannins.com? Um, but yeah, so there's that way. The other thing, um, yeah, man, drunk driver totaled my girlfriend's parked car at 2.30 a.m. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Joseph. Uh, you, girlfriend's car. My wife's car got rear-ended with her in it, like, four weeks ago now and she's got whiplash and po a concussion problem where her memory's messed up uh but they said she'll be fine um but yeah that sucks i'm just really happy that nobody got hurt because it could be bad all about tannins wait for my website joseph says from jh aquatics by the way check out jh aquatics and the fish family news he does a really good job he puts his heart and soul into it he's a hard working dude and i have seen an improvement no offense not that you weren't bad or you were bad um but uh you weren't but like watching your channel grow and your enthusiasm and like your dedication like has been really fun and like I hope that my channel's doing the same thing because I didn't know what the heck I was doing six months ago when I was toying with this January's when I really launched the channel. Uh, I am still working on history videos. I promise you I'm doing research. I'm going to do state by or uh, country by country videos too where we go like Suriname, what kind of fish are from there? What are the problems facing the fish there? Yada yada. Who are some of the... Uh, naturalists that explored it what are some quirky trivial tales of theirs so that will be in the works but when my channel's not monetized and i keep whining about this boohoo uh it's harder to find those because they don't get views i can't get super chats or anything like that and so they're not making money they're not getting a cut off anything i'm doing and so they show my videos for a week or two and sometimes they'll catch some traction. But then after that, they go kind of the back of the queue. And even searching for them, a lot of times they don't pop up. If you type in the exact name, you're going to get something with like, Lil Wayne says black, uh, I don't know, black lives matter at the waterfront hotel. <laughs> and instead of like black water biotope. You know, and then it'll just ignore the biotope because that had so many more hits. So uh, hopefully that won't be uh, a problem forever. YouTube's really, really screwing around with a lot of stuff, and hopefully it's for the better. I don't know. Um, but in the meantime, y'all are important to me. Thank you for sticking with me. If you want to support me, I don't have any funding. I'm basically an artist. Uh, I do art, graphic design. I'm going to show you guys some fish art coming up soon. But, um, and I do commissions and stuff like that. But um, this channel is made possible by you guys and by me being broke because I love the fish. But I'd do that without you guys, no offense. So, uh, YouTube's tripping. That's right. Let's bring back that hashtag. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, those catfish. Uh, you don't want to drop down the pH, and a, this. Let me say this too: a lot of species in black water biotopes can survive just fine at like six point five or seven. Like neutral is like their cutoff. 
but to get them to breed and to show their full colors, you need to drop it down to like five, five or six. And then certain species like this one, the breeder in Germany that I, that somebody had me talk with, he took it to 3.8. I'm like, I'm going to have to put these catfish in my car battery acid. I'm just going to pry the top off my car battery and put the catfish in it overnight since they're nocturnal anyways. And then I'll have babies maybe coming out my tailpipe. I don't know. Uh, but it's pretty crazy. 3.8 is in, insane uh, low. It's like more than a Coca-Cola. It's like a, like citric acid or something almost. Um so I'm up for the challenge though. I'm going to try to breed these things, but I also want to kind of get maybe some angelfish, paradise fish, licorice gourami, something like that, that I can keep in that tank with them. That's a little bigger because they're eating endlers like nothing. I'll come back in the morning and the adult endlers are gone, not the fry and the shrimp. They eat them and the, the, the tatia catfish eat the shrimp and they just leave the head. Like, they know that the head's gross or something. Like, people think the head's gross, too. And they just chomp, eat it. So, I am working by first putting leaves in and driftwood. The driftwood was already in there. This should take the pH from around 7.2 where it was at. Today, it's down to 6.5. And that's two or three day process. I moved everything out. Those catfish are probably freaking out because they've been in a bunch of different water. Flying, smuggled out of... Venezuela into the into Colombia up to LA then to Seattle on pl on planes and boats and things like that um, you do need to worry about crashes with real low pH basically your beneficial bacteria under about six or five five starts to go uh, haywire if it if it was raised in the other uh, colonies. I have a video um, called Aufux that talk about how uh, biofilms and stuff work. And uh, basically they establish colonies with thousands or hundreds or dozens, depends on the, the situation, of little uh, fungal, bacterial, proteist, and planktonic uh, at like parts of it. And some are photosynthetic, some are living off iron, some are living off tannins, and they all work together in tandem. And those are unique um, little ecosystems on every surface. Bye later, um, do two, bye, I hope two is right. Thanks for joining. Um, and so you need to watch that and allow it to cultivate, allow those inoculations of what lives in lower pH to work in there. And like, you can't have just a sponge filter while that's going on, or you can, but it's risky. So I've got a sponge filter an air stone plants. And that's the other thing. Plants don't do well in, in super acidic water. They'll do okay at like six, but lower than that, um, it is, uh, rough because like I've seen like Bacopa do okay I've seen uh, floating plants and lilies do okay like pond plants basic like uh, wetlands marshy plants do okay um, also like reed grasses um, uh, cypress uh, hellfry if you get that as a submerged plant, it won't grow well from what I've noticed, but if you put it in a black water tank after it's uh, immersed, so it's not in its water state, those roots will still grow okay in that, I've noticed. They'll ton of turn yellow and stuff, but it still gives some habitat for the fish. That uh, sphagnum moss is still alive, you can throw that in. Um, that's kind of cool looking stuff too, it looks like tiny star grass all in a big mossy mat. And uh, I can also uh, source that for free here in the Northwest. Alder cones, pine cones of sorts, but you don't want pine. You want deciduous trees because uh, carnivorous, coniferous trees are too aromatic and they have uh, antifungal properties and stuff that just screw up your system. Plus, some of them are downright like hazardous um, to everything. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, so that's kind of... Does anybody have any questions on anything else before I duck out of here? Um, I got a soccer game to watch of my own in my hometown, the Sounders. Uh, nothing like Europe's teams, but uh, they rival like LA Galaxy. Like We beat them half the time. You know, whatever. Seattle's become a really hardcore football soccer town. Um, I have to say soccer here because our football team's even bigger. The Seahawks, we we went to two Super Bowls, World Championship. Uh, I like how we call it the World Championship and it, only the U.S. is involved. It's kind of like, I'm the smartest man who hosts this channel. Forever. I win. Um... Let me look at some comments. What book, Kathy B? Yeah, Kathy B. Um, but I'm determined, especially when someone's like, no one's bred that, I'm determined to do it. And then I found out, okay, one German guy's bred that. And I'm like, well, he's German, so they're way ahead of us. It still counts if I can figure it out. So I would love to figure out how to breed this fish. Um, because the information online is wrong. The Ninja Catfish info says they move in, uh, quick moving streams, 6.5 to 7.0 water's fine. It's probably fine. I mean, they came in in that water, but they were sluggish and only tweaked out when you kind of poked them. And now that the pH is dropping, they're wedging themselves into little rocky areas and they sit with their mouth open, which is relatively really big to that little two or three inch body. And they must have little bony plates. I haven't gotten bit or anything yet, um, but they're quick enough that they could turn around and bam, get you, whatever. Um, they are good. I did not have good internet and or YouTube crashed, it sounds like. But rewatch this playlist or this uh, live stream, and it will have. Uh, I, I got. I filmed them, but I'm not going to rip them out of their little hiding spots again right now today. I'll give them some blood worms at like four in the morning. And I try to film it, but the flashlight scares them even. So I'm going to try to get it on film somehow. Uh, maybe just get them used to it. Uh, and eventually, hopefully, that'll happen. Also, I just need to get the parasites out of their system. But I think I'm going to add uh, add it in the comments after I post this. It'll probably take 20 minutes to upload or whatever. But in the comments, I want you to know, Aquatic Arts, where I got a lot of my plants and, a, and uh, my green jade shrimp that you saw in this cast, uh, they are offering 10% off to anyone on my channel who uses the code, which is secret shrimp, all in caps, number 10, and that's all one thing. And then Flip Aquatics, who has all the Caradina shrimp that I have, I bought them from them, and they gave me a good credit. Um, the uh, the code for that is history with a capital H, and then the number 10 also. That's 10% off. I don't know if you can stack it with other deals, but they've got other deals going on right now too. So mention my name or my channel and... See what they let you do. Sometimes Rob's a very generous guy um, at Flip Aquatics. But mention the channel and get the discount. It's easy. And then the real goal for that is I want to send you guys shrimp and presents and things for being awesome and supporting my channel and watching uh, and liking. Don't forget to like. Um, but I don't have the money to do that, honestly. Um, it's expensive to ship and stuff. So... And to give away like Caradina shrimp. But Flip said if enough people are using that code and saying they saw my channel, we can do some giveaways for people on this channel from Flip and he'll mail it out. So that's kind of the end goal of this this partnership is I get like a 30 or 40 percent discount um, off of certain things when he's got extra. I can order him in and show you guys what he's got and I get a deal on that. But still, I still can't afford... <laughs> To, do, to, to collect those shrimp. I'm going to try to breed them, sell them, and then I'll use that money in a fund to get more fish. I try to... Yeah, Rob's a sweetheart. I have no question, but I just want to say I enjoy the technical info on your streams. Keep it up and thank you. Jack Lamontagne. Thank you so much, Jack. I appreciate that. Um, I really do. And in my videos, I try to keep it scientific, historic... 
specific if I can. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep up with questions or I get sidetracked or whatever, but um, it means a lot that the channel has gotten so much traction in the last, since January when I started it really, like, we're almost at 2,000. I might do something for when we hit 2,000 subscribers. Obviously, I'm not buying subscribers or doing anything like that, and so... I love that my statistics on like a lot of channels are like people are watching this for a while and like the ranking on the social media things, even though it's small, we have a lot of interactions. And also, uh, I want you guys to know that my art is available online and you can check it out, even if you just want to check out because there's a lot of uh, aquatic art like koi fish and stuff. I was a tattoo artist for a decade and... Um, also, there is a Facebook group that Betsy kind of manages, and I kind of chime in on, but I'm kind of busy doing other stuff sometimes, so I, I'm trying, I'm trying, guys. Uh, but thank you so much, Betsy, for managing that and keeping active with that. But hopefully if there's questions, either through YouTube or through Facebook, we can get that going. There's also an Instagram. You can find it, but it's I haven't gotten it down yet. When, the, if, when and if the channel gets bigger you can kind of switch platforms so that you can get questions through easier. Um, so yeah, Madfish Diva, join the group um, right on. So all that info should be in the description of this right now, I would hope. And uh, yeah, the Facebook group has the same name as the channel. Facebook group is becoming... Uh, yes, I would love that, Jack. Um, I'll probably do my next cast either Tuesday, unless something crazy happens tonight. Uh, I'm hanging out with Steve, the owner of Aquarium Zen. Uh, Monday, we're having a barbecue, him and I. And this is the first time we've kind of like hung out at someone's house rather than just kind of shoot the breeze and out and about. Um, and we might chat on some stuff. I don't want to like hit him up for businessy propositions, but he has access to the coolest stuff. He's the one who got me the catfish from some random place that shall remain unknown wasn't seagrest or 5d or anything like that i don't think so um yeah but he's a cool dude and that can spur if something cool goes on that i think is noteworthy sometimes i'll come on and i'll do another cast or something other than the tuesday thursday and usually sundays are the days it could be but tuesday is always uh, in the afternoon and and or early evening thursdays usually in the uh, early afternoon to mid afternoon. And then, um, Saturday can be any time I've tried out different time slots, but it kind of depends what's going on. Like if there's a big game or whatever, um, I'll switch it up. So I just want you guys to see also this tank is doing super well. This is the tank from Aquarium Zen and it's the ADA light substrate. So not the full blown, Amazon uh, Amazonia substrate uh, yeah we might do another late night chat soon especially with the catfish like if I see them if I catch them acting a foo look at this fish he's just I wonder if his swim bladder is having an issue he's kind of twitchy um, I really like those mini killer whales let's see some more video when you can yeah I, I'll try to get them out and about I'm not gonna like poke and prod them non-stop obviously also this is another strain of snail that I'm breeding I've got a black one and a leopard one and then these peach ones and then I've got like red and pink too but this one's like peach um, and then uh, this I couldn't remember the name of it the other day for some reason, because I'm a dumb dumb, but it's Pantanal. So it is Ludwigia Pantanal, even though it looks like a Pogostemon or a Limnophilia, but it is a uh, Pantanal. Um, and I had another question on. So we've got the super red uh, Ludwigia and then Lacustris X. Uh, Ludwigia X Lacustris is what's back there. And then the, the super red Ludwigia. Um, Ludwigia come in so many varieties. I, those in Rotalas are just really, um, amazing. And this one I started from, like, a teeny little start. And boom, it's, like, taking over. Actually, all these are, are rare Ludwigias back in here. 
and I can't keep them straight all the time. This one, I can't remember. Steve gave it to me, and he gave me a clipping literally this big and was like, yeah, if you can grow it, go right ahead. As kind of like a, yeah, ha, 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 ha. And I've gotten it, I've got three shoots of it here, and then over in this tank over here, I've got like a friggin' forest of it growing. So when he comes over for <laughs> Memorial Day dinner, uh, I'm gonna be like, hey, by the way, uh, I'll take any cuttings. Also, I wanted to share this with you guys. This will be the last thing before I go. Um, in that uh, one of my leopard endlers finally has a split tail, which is dope. It has a leer tail. And I haven't had that morph ever happen. So I don't know where he went. He's really young. But he has a split tail. These guys, usually you don't see them this time of day in this light. But these are black neon tetras. And I just wanted to show people, like, no one ever buys them, but they're really beautiful. If you have natural light, they're, like, blue and tan and then a dark navy blue. They're not actually black. And they have this silver that is just incredible. So wanted to show you that. And then I wanted to show you uh, this little uh, sight. You're going to see it with kind of too much light on it. Let's see if I can change that. There we go. That, that might do it. But basically, um, I just love this. I haven't done anything to this stick. This is a fungal um, or alfux that has turned the wood purple. And then willow moss is starting to grow on it. Um, and then boost out of nowhere, like I didn't place it, got stuck in the opening here because of the power head up there that blows everything from down here and then it all gets stuck over there. Uh, so all the other boost is wrapped around the, uh, and I have to clean that all the time, but I like to give the fish a little bit of a challenge, uh, and if uh, with the filter. So, um, but yeah, it's just, it's the little things in your tank and like that I want to like save and take out. Also this, uh, rock has Java moss growing on it. And I did not do this spores of the Java moss are doing it on their own, but they have taken over the cracks in this quartzite rock and it looks really beautiful, I think. And so it's just the little things it's like aquascaping. I could have never done that. I could have never gotten it to do that and look so beautiful. So that's like something where you keep that stone set aside and you take care of it. And if you ever want to do a new tank that looks like it's been that way in a stream for a thousand years, you use that. So I need to do some major trimming here. I trim usually five inch long or four inch long because it all starts to get laggy anyways. Um, so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's talk. Hope you're doing well. And um, take care of yourself. Um, liar, not leer, Betsy. Yeah, I know. Um, take care of yourself so you can take care of your fish and the people around you. We'll have more of the little killer whales. We'll have more of whatever you guys like. Comment. Tell me what you want to know, what you want me to cover, topics. That's all great. In the Facebook group, we really have um, a community where people are sharing things with each other, and I don't need to be there. Like, I, I want to, and I like to be there, but you guys kick butt. Like, you, you just do. So have a great weekend, you guys. Take care of yourselves so you can take care of the people around you and the fish around you. And I will talk to you later. Have a great Memorial Day if you're in the U.S. And uh, just a great weekend if you're not in the U.S. Peace, love, happiness. Swim on, guys. Oh, Blackwell.